So, uh, any other quick questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, so our, grab these. <laughs> so, our next speaker, and we'll try to get this fixed going, is um, Transformative Learning in an Immersive Agroecology Semester. Pedagogy and student perspectives. And John. I'm John. Okay, that's done. Okay. So, I think I have to stop sharing. Thanks. Okay. And here's this whenever you're ready. Let me get this out. out. <laughs> so while we're loading the talk, I just want to introduce um, half of the people in this room have either taught or taken this semester yeah. that we're going to be talking about today. So. Uh, my colleague Ruth, um, she she uh, code she code, has co-designed this semester with I me. I may have screwed it up. And, okay. uh, I screwed it up. So. Then Gonzi and Juan are current students in our agroecology. Okay. Just, 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 uh, oh, I use the mouse. Okay, thank you. And Mingla is actually um, a past thank you in this semester. <laughs> so. One big happy family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can see what happens. So, um, a little bit about where we're from, and you folks are welcome to sit down. If you want to. <laughs> we can just all stand at a wall. And <laughs> so, we're in northern Indiana, so about um, two hours south of Notre Dame, about an hour north of Fort Wayne, and Mary Lee. Is an environmental learning center. So, like around here, so we went to Stratford yesterday. Um, so, I don't know if folks, you know, ah. locally know about that, but it's kind of a sort of a similar mission. And there's a 1200 acre nature preserve. And as part of that 1200 acre nature preserve, we have 100 acres that really is sort of our farm. And so, within that land use, we not only have crops and agroforestry and orchards and pastures, but we also have wetlands, we have prairies. So, um, so, and now that we're loaded on, I can show you some photos of the place. So, sorry, you got lots of people helping you here. So this talk is mainly describing this immersive residential semester. So, as I mentioned, um, Mary Lee, which is part of Goshen College, is this large scale, you know, 1200 acre nature preserve. And as part of that, we have 100 acres, uh, which is our farm. And so, uh, as part of our experience in even having a farm associated with a nature preserve, right, a lot of folks kind of go the direction of, okay, you've got your nature preserve and then you've got your farm connected to it. Um, we go for a much more integrative approach. So it's understanding, it's the agroecological approach, right? Understanding that our farm is not separate from the nature preserve, but that we're fulfilling the same goals, the same missions that the nature preserve is as part of the nature preserve, not a separate, not apart from it. So it's sometimes you feel like a nuanced point, but it's important. And so a lot of folks might uh, be comfortable and understand this paradigm, this idea of land sharing versus land sparing. And so, you know, in the on the left here, we're kind of looking at hot spots of biodiversity interspersed within an agricultural landscape that might be um, that might allow less diversity. Then over here, look, you're looking at each farm having its own, you know, having its own hot spots of biodiversity. Then over here is a matrix of properties where the properties are coordinated in order to preserve that biodiversity. And so we, um, if you look at our um, property, we can look at it from the historical context, right? So we do have a few aerial images that kind of help you understand the work we've been at for the last 50 years. I haven't been doing this work for 50 years, but I'm joining in, <laughs> you know, we're joining in in the, the last part of it here. So, um, Back in 1938, this area in northern Indiana um, almost completely uh, denuded with trees. Um, 1967 is not much changed, but that's when it was taken over by Mary Lee. And um, you can see 1973, uh, some of the cropping fields, you can see some bird habitat 
you know, planted in there, terraced along um, topographic lines. And then 1985 is when you're starting to see a lot of difference. So you're, we still have our, agri, we still have agricultural fields, right? Um, but we also have um, added this wetland in the middle of the property, which is able to catch water from all of our, you know, all of our activities and also some of our neighbors' activities. We've also got some prairie that's been planted. It's, you know, it's hard to tell from an aerial image. We got prairie in there. Now we've got some forests creeping in again. So we got some of that woody coverage. So now today, so today we have the historic farmstead, which has always been there um, for as long as Mary Lee has um, had the property. But then here's the student farm and student lodging. This is our agroforestry plot over here, nut orchard on the top of the hill here. And then as you can see, we've got forests, we've got prairies, we've got grazing lands dispersed throughout our property. So this is what we call the farm, which is about 100 acres. And like I said, this is attached to the larger 1,200 acres that is Mary Lee, which is part of Goshen College. So sort of in that description of land sparing, land sharing, we're at this point where we have the farm in and of itself as a multifunctional landscape where we've got agricultural production interspersed with other wildlife habitats, things like that. So it's not all hunky-dory, it's, it's not all positives, um, in that when you have a diverse system that you're functioning here, that, that's functioning, that you're managing here, uh, you also have all the animals uh, that come with it, right? So for instance, for our chickens, we have to do multiple layers of electric fencing to keep them alive and happy because they're little delicious balls of meat <laughs> for most animals that are out there. And so our perspective is, is as the farmers um, and the managers of this um, property, it's our responsibility to make sure that we can still have this diverse um, landscape while also making, um, being able to achieve our agricultural or food production goals. So, um, so what is the agroecology summer intensive semester? So I explained the context of where we do our work. So now I'm gonna explain the context a little bit about what we do, and then we'll jump into uh, some data about some of the student reflections. So you don't need to read all this text. This is um, part of Gleesman's sort of definition of agroecology, right? So, just in general, agroecology, right? Science movement and practice, and this idea that it's transdisciplinary and it's um, and that it encourages participation, right? And this kind of takes it a, a little further, thinking about agroecological transformation. So this idea that we're moving from systems that require really high inputs that have to be that have to be brought in to basically relying on some of our, you know, some of the ecological niches of some of our organisms in order to provide, say, fertility or pollinator habitat, et cetera. Then moving, moving further down, now we're talking about reconnecting producers and consumers and then reorient, reorienting systems, right, in order to address that. So this is kind of definition of agroecology writ large, just to kind of give us a shared context of what do we mean when we say the agroecology summer intensive. Welcome. So when we um, when we developed the semester, you know, we came up with student learning objectives to sort of figure out what is it, you know, because there's way too much, <laughs> there's way too much to cover even within the semester's context. So where did we want to really focus? And so this idea of practical knowledge and skills, so that's why we have them out in the fields. We have this wonderful learning lab. They're working with animals, and they'll be able to tell you more about that. But also being able to imagine innovative, tractable solutions, um, putting pieces together in ways they might not have thought about before. And this idea of a coupled human environmental system, because a lot of folks might come out, they might be thinking about the environmental aspects or the sociological aspects, um, being able to put those together in an agroecological context. Um, flows of energy, all the different areas of food, not just production, right? And then uh, shaping communities, food's ability to shape communities is 
Um, a big piece that we've been working on lately, so food-oriented community development. As we all know, food is central to society, and so it's often a good access point um, into communities. And number seven is super crucial for our students. Um, we take tons of field trips. They need to be talking with professionals, networking with them, understanding what the current issues are in agroecology today, and being able to know someone who knows someone who knows someone that gets them their next step. We know that even in, even in the post-COVID world, it's still who you know to some extent. <laughs> and then also looking at morals, ethics, spiritual beliefs, um, how those mold their personal decision-making or how those mold decision-making of organizations that may be working with. So this, again, this is a lot to digest and we can cover, if you folks are interested in any certain part of this, we can cover that more in the questions. So I'm just kind of covering a lot of ground quickly here. So how, how do we go about doing this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and skip over these pedagogies for now. I'm just going to let you read them for a second while I talk. So I'm sure you folks will be able to ignore the words that are coming out of my mouth to read the words that <laughs> you're interested in on the board. And so these are some of our common pedagogies. And again, if you see something you're interested in or want us to elaborate on, uh, we can talk more about that in the questions portion. So, student reflections. This is where we get into the really interesting piece. Yeah. So, um, I'd like for uh, Juan to take a moment and share one of his uh, experiences that he's had um, this summer and what really stood out to him. So, yeah, one thing that really stood out to me this summer, like working in the farm and all that, was being able to work in the garden beds as freely as I could. And I used to work on guard events back in my home, but it was never the same. Like right now, I have access to all the tools I need. I gain knowledge and experience with the classes. It's just a lot of a lot of things I have access to that I didn't have access to before. So it makes it very much so uh, like good experience per se. Yeah. Rosie, do you want to share a little bit about uh, your experience working with some animals? Yeah, um, it's been a really good experience. Uh, what I've really enjoyed most is that, so for me, okay, I've had zero experience with agriculture. I know there's some veteran in my family that do work for farmers, but I had zero experience until I came here. And the which like, so it's like taking a classes and but then you instantly get the in-person experience and it's it's really easy to catch on. Like I've never known knew how to milk how to milk and I came here and it's, we were in terms of how this is how to milk, this is how you understand animals, this is how it's you are introduced to a whole different world. And not only that, we're also like let's John make sure we get to go to field trips and we understand how the food system affects animal health or animal health life and it's been really meaningful for us and eye-opening on how all the food systems work thanks so much for they're not greedy for this activity by the way this <laughs> <laughs> so um i want to give some pictures and examples of uh student reflections and things that uh they've done um, throughout uh, the last couple of years where we've been running this program. Um, and so one thing I wanna highlight is just how, um, you know, this is 10 weeks, so it's pretty intensive. Um, you structure it where you won't really be able maybe to tell if you're taking in the class, if you're actually in class or if you're doing something practical because it's integrated together. And then we take one whole day out of each week uh, to go and see different practitioners, meet different field trip hosts. Um, and building those relationships has been really important um, for us because it gives you some more real world examples and another kind of context. So, um, you know, jam packed experiences, um, it's just really been important for them understanding their own beliefs and living those out uh, into the future. So, I am going to highlight kind of three key experiences that students go through. Um, and so they're in a living learning community. So all the students are living out at on site and making meals together, um, 
going through classes together. So it's just a very integrated experience. Um, so the three I'm going to highlight are, I'm going to talk about sort of our milking um, and field trips with that, our education in our garden space and how that works, uh, and then also a poultry project that we're a part of. There is a part of one of our classes in the whole semester. So uh, for students, a lot of times we have we have been give it, gifted uh, two dairy goats. So we are a micro dairy, right? And so students are able to get this hands-on experience of milking. If they've never had the experience milking an animal before, or even if they grew up on a dairy farm, this is a, we're hand milking raw milk. Um, and then they're able to take this experience and map it over onto what they're learning in the field trips. So we also um, visit local dairies. We have a mid-sized family dairy that's really close to us. Uh, we're actually neighbors. <laughs> Their field uh, is the one next to us. Sometimes we smell them across the way if the wind's blowing right. Um, and so we're able to work on those relationships and those conversations. Um, and you, from our students' reflections, you know, they came in thinking like, these mid-sized confined dairy operations like the animal welfare is going to be horrible, but they found out that really actually they're not that concerned about animal welfare. Like the farmers that are doing this really care about those animals and are trying to take care of them in the best way that they can. And so that comes out in those conversations that really put a, puts a face to something that seems way far out there. Um, and uh, but then it brings out other other interests and other things that they're thinking about maybe. How is labor handled on farms and who's actually doing the milking and how are they treated and what are they being paid? So we bring in lots of those parts of, and seeing different parts of the system and just put it being rooted in your own experience so that you kind of know where the farmers are coming from. Um, and so I like this quote that their personal views on the dairy industry hasn't really shifted, but their opinion of the people has become more empathetic towards the people that are doing that. So we're working towards having this, being able to bridge those gaps and have those conversations and really um, understand one another. So having our milk goats and our field trips is one part of that. Another part is our education garden, uh, which Juan kind of talked about. Uh, they grow their own CSA share um, as part of it. And then they also are, um, we have an education garden and an education program as part of Mary Lee, which integrates with our Masters of Environmental Education, where schools from the area come and have field trips out at Mary Lee um, on our farm space. And so our students are planning that. And so just the experience they have of working in the garden together, learning about themselves, learning about working as a team. And what uh, Juan was saying is, it's a place where it's okay to fail, to try out something new. Like this is a lab space, it doesn't have to, but it gives them real world uh, experience of designing and creating. And this is actually what you're doing really matters. It's gonna be used uh, by students and other, uh, and other people in this area. So just that real hands-on experience. And just, it also gives them this spiritual connection too um, for some of our students. Our poultry project, we have, Dale chicks, which we raise up to butchering, um, and the students participate in that whole entire process. Um, and so this has also been really important, just being a part, you know, often butchering and slaughtering is not a part of something that we like to do or what to know about. We kind of want to put a shit off to the side. So we're visiting uh, different producers uh, and that are doing it themselves, and then we are also participating in it. Uh, participating in the butcher and slaughter of the chickens that we have raised ourselves. Um, so just kind of those things that bring out that experience and some of the student understandings about what does that mean to them and how does that change their thinking. Um, so we also do kind of like a special debrief for that. It can be really emotionally intense um, experience, especially for students that have never done something like this before. Um, so we do that. But I know we're Running close to the end of time, so I'm happy to take whatever questions you have. Um, yeah, and 
And just kind of in closing, so we covered a lot of slides of information. We moved, we intentionally moved quickly through some of them because I wanted the information to be there. If you did want to go back in the question and answer part and get a little more detail. So feel free to direct us back to slides if you're interested. But hopefully, you know, this has been able to give you folks a bit of a snapshot of what we're doing over there at Goshen College. And yeah, we're happy to entertain questions now. So thank you for your attention. And just one minute of questions, quick questions. Yeah, I want to um, circle back to the, the transformative learning part of it. And uh, could you um, uh, unpack a little bit like those aspects that you find most um, uh, effective in terms of like the, that deeper transformation in, in, in con connection with the uh, pedagogy of transformative learning? Yes, yeah, so I think some of those things are allowing students uh, freedom to uh, and giving them those real world examples and giving them the freedom to make mistakes and have it not work out right. Um, I found, especially working with animals, a lot of people are very, you know, like it's hard to get in and be able to work with them very closely because, you know, something might happen or, but just having that sort of building those trusts and coaching along the way to have those uh, hands on experiences that are then tied also, I think, to the field trips. Um, so then you're like revisiting that conceptually, you have the experience and then you have the, the field trip, like the concept, and you have the field trip interaction. So I think those and, are going to be And, and we intentionally try to keep field trips diverse too for that very Yeah. Is Angel here? Angel online. Angel online. Oh, you're online. Okay, sorry. Anyway, thanks, folks. Oh, yeah. oh is there? Can we have Just I like the program. Angel, if you can hear me, can you? Um... Economic.